chapter, chapter 13, we're going to be going over mutual funds. We've already talked about the basics of investments. We've talked a little bit about bonds and basically loaning money to companies and to, um, to governments. We've talked about stocks. In other words, becoming an owner in various companies. Mutual funds is kind of a blend of some of these things. So that's what we're going to be talking about here in chapter 13. The whole idea behind a mutual fund is to pool the money that you have to buy a bunch of different things. In other words, what you're doing is you're putting together kind of a grab bag of, uh, of stocks or bonds or both into a particular fund. The whole idea behind this is to spread out the risk that you have. Now, when you think about some of the retirement accounts, most people have mutual funds in their retirement accounts of some sort. You can see how it's grown over the years as far as the number of funds and the amount of money that's actually invested in that. Now, the primary reasons, number one is diversification, okay, and risk reduction. What you're doing is you're taking uh, things that might be very risky and matching that with things that might be very safe, putting those together so that you can reduce some of the risk. It's called diversification. Plus, with mutual funds, you typically have professional management. In other words, you have somebody who's really tied into the market. They're really knowing what it is that's going on as far as all these various companies. And they have this fund and they have all these different stocks and things like that in there. And what they're doing is managing that on a day-to-day -day basis. They'll sell some, they'll buy some, things like this. The whole idea behind it is to try to improve the return on investment that you're getting. You can see the different types of securities that you might have in there. So in a fund, you might have some securities, maybe some stocks from pharmaceuticals, from utilities, things like that, trying to balance out the risk that you might be running into. Now, you have closed-ended funds, okay, which is very few, where what they do is they, they it's kind of like shares. You're buying shares and, they, and whoever's setting up the fund says, okay, this is all the shares there's going to be. And you trade those back and forth. Then you have open-ended funds. Now, open-ended funds is you can just continue to create more and more shares that go along with it. Now, you talk about loads, all right? There are funds that have loads. Loads are basically commissions. Now, you can have a front-end load, all right, where when you buy into a fund, you buy certain shares of a fund, you're paying a sales commission up, up front. Or you can have back-end load. In other words, when you're selling that, uh, those shares, you're paying a commission. You could have what's called a level load. In other words, they don't have sales commissions in there, but they have higher management fees that go with it. No loads are where you don't have to pay any kind of sales charges whatsoever. Whenever you buy into a fund, and again, I have my retirement account with Edward Jones, and I have uh, money in various uh, mutual funds that go along with that. There's going to be management fees that go along with it. In other words, within that fund, you're going to have this manager who is who is uh, buying and selling securities, making sure that they're getting the best return on investment with the lowest risk possible. There's also going to be some other fees in there that might go along with uh, marketing and things like that. Now, when you think about the types of funds there are, you can have stock funds, bond funds, and maybe other funds, all right? Stock funds are mutual funds that are made up of a bunch of stocks. And you can see there that you might have a particular fund that is aggressive growth. And what they'll do is they will have more riskier types of investments, stock investments in that fund. Or you could have equity income. In other words, your 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 fund is buying a lot of utilities and things like that that primarily are there for income. Uh, you could have funds that are focused on uh, capitalization size, small cap, mid or large cap. Or you could have funds that are looking at global or regional or international types of things. So there's all kinds of different funds that you can buy where they have invested in different stocks for different reasons. You also have bond funds. In other words, there are, these are funds that only focus in on just bonds. In other words, lending to various companies 
or governments. So you can see you could have like high yield bond fund. In other words, they're, they're getting into some of the junk bonds and things like that. Short term corporate bonds. So there's all kinds of different funds that are focused on just bonds that you could have. And then there's also other types of funds where it might be balanced. In other words, some equities, some bonds, things like that. Or you can have a family of funds. In other words, you have a mutual fund that buys, uh, purchases shares into other different mutual funds. All right. Now, the whole idea behind this is to think about how can I best set up my investments my portfolio to meet my needs and a lot of that is based on just you know your personal uh, risk assessment uh, how old you are how much you have investing things like that the thing to think about is do you want to participate in a retirement account and we've talked about this before you get yourself into a good financial situation you get your uh, savings account built up and then you start putting money away into for your retirement and remember a little bit at a time over over time really does grow you can have managed funds or index funds managed funds is where you have that person who is focusing in on which securities am I going to buy today how do I want to make sure that I'm that I am uh, uh, getting the best return and they're actively going in and buying and selling stuff Index funds are basically saying, okay, we're going to set up a fund that has a series of stocks that are within the uh, Standard & Poor's 500, so to speak. And what it does is it just says, okay, these are the stocks we're going to have in there. You can see that that gives you lower annual expenses because you don't have somebody who's working on it on a day-to-day -day basis. One of the things that you'll receive when you do purchase shares in a fund is a prospectus and annual report. Again, this prospectus is giving you all the information about that fund and all the things that go into it. The annual report comes out that shows here's uh, what the uh, what the finances were. This is what we made over the year. Things like that. The annual report is going to have the letter from the president. It has all the uh, detailed financial information as far as here are the things that we have in there, our assets, our liabilities, in other words, the balance sheet, has the income statement, the, the cash flow statement, things like that. You can open up a retirement account and purchase mutual funds for as little as 250 bucks or so. I mean, it, you don't have to have much money in order to do that. This is why I'm saying the earlier you get started, the better off you're going to be. Where you make your money on mutual funds is the stocks that are within that fund will pay dividends. And so what they do is they take the money from those dividends, put that into the fund, and they might buy more shares. You have uh, capital gains. In other words, you have somebody who's actively managing that fund, and they sell a stock and made money off of it. They can distribute the uh, money that they made to you if you want, or you can put it back into the account, buy more shares. And then you have capital gains or losses. In other words, you are selling some of your funds. You bought a fund for 20 bucks a share, then you sold it for $25 a share. You're gonna have to pay $5 in capital gains. Open-end fund shares, uh, just these are the easiest thing to do as far as purchasing some of those things. A lot of times what you'll do is you'll set it up with uh, a savings plan. Okay, so in other words, uh, every month you might have a deposit into your retirement account and you're purchasing shares of funds. So these are some of the key points from this chapter. If you have any questions, please give me a shout. In the next video, we're going to be talking about how to actually look up the information for the various funds to help you with the Excel sheets.